Hello my friends and welcome, we have some awesome news coming from the front lines, Ukraine takes the ground every day. Let's go to the Bakhmut area at first, you can see that near to Klishivka, the surrounding heights are already cleared from the Russian occupiers. Well, you can see here that it is still in a grey zone, however, from the information I have, Ukraine took control over those very important hills and now the fight continues for Klishivka itself. Of Russia little by little withdraw their forces from this area and it's a very important area my friends because by taking this under control we're gonna move towards Opetna and also probably to Bakhmut city. Now let's go for the timeline review. It was yesterday and it is today so this hill is cleared from the Russian occupiers. I'm sure about it. We have some delay in this military map for around two days actually. If you look at this area you may see that there is no movement on the north. However, we have the confirmation that the fighting continues for Berhivka and further than Berhivka for this road. We even have the video confirmation from Berhivka. There was the Russian T-90 tank that was targeted by the Ukrainian FPV drone. This is the image from the drone, it went just into the tank and we have the image from the other drone showing that this tank was targeted and the Russian crew had to leave this tank on the warfield. The Russian T-90 tank costs 3 million dollars, the drone itself costs not more than 500 dollars. Plus the shell that it may carry, I think not more than $2,000, so it's very efficient to use the FPV drones on the front lines. I tried to fly the FPV drones myself, I would say that it's not really easy to do. Especially targeting the moving objects, the drones are usually 7 inch and they carry a lot of the payload, that is why the maneuverability is not that good compared to the freestyle 5 inch FPV drones. But the most important thing that the range is much better on those drones. On the south part there is also a Kurdumovka village and Russia start to use T-90 tanks over there as well. And again we have the video confirmation from the drone and Ukraine continued to use the FPV drones to target the Russian tanks. The tank went totally kaput and even blocked the railroad. The Russian crew escaped from the place, but Ukrainian drones added more grenades to make sure that Russia will not use this tank any longer. As you can see, FPV drones really matter in a modern day war and we have a good school of the training of our soldiers to use the FPV drones. We have even brigades especially dedicated to use that weaponry, drone pilots, many of them. Russia also uses the FPV drones, but I think that the Ukrainian side has the better training because we started to use them at first and then Russia took our experience. The Russian military system is not that flexible as the Ukrainian one, Ukrainian military is willing to modernize. Yes, as I told you, we still have this ancient Soviet Union mindset in some of the commanders, but mainly Ukrainian army is developing very fast. All right, what I want to show you that we have the success on the south as well, near to Pryutne. The fighting is ongoing for this river. Ukraine could have crossed it already. This is a tiny little village, however it's important because it has the road that leads to the other village and so on, so on. We may finally get to Lubimovka and here is not far away from the Russian main defense lines. And let's go to the timeline to see the advancement of Ukrainian army. It was yesterday and it is today. We took some of the lakes, the part of the river and I think that the best thing would be to advance from this area because in that case you don't need to cross the river. But this place is quite tricky because there are many of the forest lines as you can see and here are no forest lines already. You can go straight if you cross the river to Priyutne village and take it liberating it. The next big natural obstacle will be this forest line over here. I'm sure that Russia put lots of the defense, even though this military map doesn't mark it as the defense line, like over here, but I'm sure that Russia has many trenches, many dots, 
and they may send lots of the equipment to secure this perimeter just not let ukraine to get into this place the main task for ukraine is to reach the main defense area of the russian forces and after that to penetrate it we're gonna use all of the leopards all of the challenger 2 tanks and others for sure so that will help us to move forward and forward russia has lots of the problems in their supplies they do not have the properly working counter artillery operation of their forces that was the remark from the dismissed general ivan popov who shout out this problem loud into gerasimov's office gerasimov told him that everything is under control so that general went to putin and after it he was just dismissed from his position i told you about it yesterday after it the general went to the social media spreading the information about the very terrible state of the russian army and he says that the russian defense looks great but in fact it's very weak on the south front and ukraine is pushing every day so finally we'll be able to break the russian lines apart but the ukrainian side is still in lack of some tools to break the russian defense however we have some good news about it let me show you the information is coming from the ukrainian side one of the ukrainian generals told cnn that ukraine has received the promised cluster munition and not just from the united states he says that that munition can radically change the situation on the battlefield and i would agree with that because the artillery cluster shell is the best tool that you can use against the infantry and the russian defense lines it's not a good tool against the heavy armored russian tanks but for the light armored vehicles and some of the btrs this is also the choice against the russian tanks we use the standard shells or very precise excalibur 155 millimeter shells plus as you already saw in this video the fpv drones and why do we need those cluster shells most of all is to demine the fields all right i have just received the information from the russian publics that the air defense is an operation in voronish the russian territory and we may see some sort of the flying object flies there basically there is the military base in Voronezh, and russia uses it to target the ukrainian infrastructure they base their rockets over there all right and there is the ground explosion recorded on the cctv cam in Voronezh. according to the wall street journal the russian general armageddon surawikin was indeed detained in the russian prison it happened a couple of days after the failed Prigozhin's attempted coup not just Surovikin was arrested, there are around 15 Russian commanders who are now being detained. I would say that it's the dramatic loss for the Russian command. Plus, based on more conflicts appearing in the Russian army, for example, with General Ivan Popov, who said actually truth about the Russian army and was dismissed, there could be the other attempted coup in russia and putin is really scared about it because putin personally took the side of gerasimov and shoigu those are very corrupt untalented and not qualified for their positions military officials they will finally bring the russia to the military defeat in ukraine putin doesn't understand that and continue to propel their interests here we have the warrior of the self-proclaimed lugansk people's republic he holds the thompson rifle he also showed the other equipment that was supplied to their self-proclaimed republic all of that stuff comes from the second world war and those thompsons are the united states land lease equipment that was shipped to the soviet union in 40s president zelensky said that ukraine may win this war during the year i think that it's very unrealistic forecast as i told you the war may continue for quite a long time because none of the side has the final resource advantage to finish it very fast and from my own perspective until putin halts the power in russia there will be no change in this war yes it may intensify it may more count but the war itself will continue because it's the main thing that drives putin nowadays so allies and ukraine should concentrate to remove putin and his circle from the power in russia that's the main goal i think that is why we were all quite satisfied that prigozhin started his 
march to Moscow because for sure in that case Russia would stop the war in Ukraine and there would be many wars in Russia itself. By the way Wagner started their march once again this time just for relocation to Belarus. They used the same highway M4 from Rostov and Don to Moscow but they should turn at some point and go to Belarus where the camps are prepared for those soldiers. Prigozhin had to give up some of the weaponry to the Russian army but that number is not that significant. We are speaking about 25,000 artillery shells which Wagner usually uses just for three days. And from the information I have they still keep some of the tanks in their Wagner army. So that's what I'm telling you. Biden braces NATO for the long conflict with Russia making Cold War parallel, so indeed it may continue for decades even. Depends on how long Putin's circle will keep the power in Russia. But finally there is no way out for Russia not to collapse as the Soviet Union did after the Cold War is over. So Ukraine for Russia would be like Afghanistan for the Soviet Union. The war in Afghanistan was for a long 10 years. Because of it, the Soviet Union went under the strict sanctions, plus the Soviet economy started to collapse. There were many of the people in the Soviet Union who were disappointed about the Afghan war. And here the war continued just for one and a half years, but the scale of it is much bigger compared to the war in Afghanistan. It means that Russia potentially have many more armored volunteers that might be involved into the new Russian revolution. I honestly expect that stuff to happen, not very soon, but we saw already the signs of it. My friends, there are lots of the videos that I publish on my Telegram channel and I cannot upload them on this platform because of the obvious reason. Why did I choose the Telegram? Because basically there is almost no censorship and I can upload whatever I want. Plus I upload the information there with more details and more regularly. So please check out the link in the video description just below and join my Telegram channel. You may also have the conversation with other users over there. You may react with your emojis and also upload your information on the comment channel, which is the part of my Telegram channel. And here is just for fun to show the mighty Russian army. I'll turn on the volume of the video. Let's go. But actually, unfortunately, Russian army is still big, they have resources, and not all of the soldiers are like that. They have very experienced soldiers. That's why it's the hard war for Ukraine and that's why Ukraine needs more and more weaponry. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. Don't forget to press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, you may check out the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and for the sponsor members of this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your awesome support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.